This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by director David Soren, who is behind Captain Underpants, the epic first movie. Am I getting that right? I, I keep, first epic? First epic, epic first, movie. First epic I don't think movie. it yes, radically changes anything. I, I feel like I want to get it right, though. <laughs> I, was, I was being tricked by it earlier. Um, which is a story about two friends who unwittingly or unintentionally, I guess is the better word to say, uh, turn their principal into their comic book superhero. Um, one of the things I want to start with is that you've been at DreamWorks for, I seem like 20 years, as far years, as I can tell. Yeah. Um, you've worked on a ton of projects there. Most of the stuff that seems to come out of there is original content. What was it like sort of taking on a uh, existing property? Was it advantageous in some ways? Was it a challenge in other ways? Like, what was that sort of experience like? Well, the studio has done uh, definitely a combination of, of original and also things based on books, the How to Train Your Dragon series, Shrek. Oh, I true, mean, yeah. some of them are more based on, you know, very heavily slim based, yeah. picture book style, you know, books as well. Uh, in this case, it, it, this was like a pretty fully baked series yes. of, you know, 12 books that have been rolled out over the past 20 years with a huge Ball fan day, base yeah. of like 70 million worldwide yeah. that, are, that are out there. So um, it's it, it was a great privilege, honestly, to to be able to take the reins over something like this that, that has such a, a loyal following and, uh, you know, people now in their 20s and 30s who grew up on these books and they kind of symbolize their childhood in many ways. Uh, and then, you know, at the other end of the spectrum, you've got kids who are six or seven learning how to read and introduce to them completely anew. So, um, it, you know, it was it was pretty fantastic uh, in this case, having, um, you know, I met with Dave Pilkey, the creator of the books, uh, yeah, the books. Uh, about a month after I came on the movie, and we walked through kind of where I was going with it, and I showed him a lot of the artwork, mm. talked through some of the story um, changes, uh, directions that I was trying to take it in, and he really dug what we were doing. Um, he's not a fan of of movies that just are word for word translations from from book to screen. He's like they're boring. Yeah. What's new about going to see the movie? Yeah. Uh, so he he really empowered us to make the best version of a Captain Underpants movie we could. That I mean that is definitely a huge uh, bit of support, but. The thing that would scare me is the fan base. Like, it's great to have the creator supporting you, but ultimately, right. like, the, the fickleness <laughs> of fans, I mean, especially with, like, superhero movies and, and, and all that sort of stuff, feels like a this comic is a book. Freak, this is a freaky superhero. Yeah, yeah. it is, but it's also, it also a comic book one, and comic book fans are very right. hardcore about canon and all sorts of stuff right. like that. What was the process like in terms of trying to figure out, like, uh, like you got this green light to do what you want? Right. How, how do you sort of balance that with also being like, we want to make sure the fans can really appreciate this because, right. I mean, that's the last thing you want to do is piss off the fans. Sure. Whatever, no, of so. course. Of course. And uh, I mean, look, I, the biggest advantage I had is that I was a fan of the books. Okay. Uh, you know, start. I found the first one in the bookstore 20 years ago. I stumbled really? across wow. it. I picked it up. I looked. I'm like, this is kind of ridiculous <laughs> and started leafing through it. I think I, I managed to read about half of it right there in the aisle and I was just completely smitten with it. I wish I'd came up with the idea myself. <laughs> so I, there was something about it that was clearly like grabbing me well before, you know, I ever came on to the mm -hmm. movie or even knew it was going to be a movie. Uh, and then I read it again through, uh, you know, with my children, you know, who, I've got a 10 year old and a seven year old. So I got to kind of see it through the, through, through their lens a little as well. And, uh, you know, and then when I came on the movie, I really kind of scoured through all the books, made tons of notes, uh, and really tried to identify the things that captured the spirit of the books, you know, like uh, a little checklist, that, you know, um, from things like in the first book, one of the pranks the boys pull is a, they take over the wow. intercom system and play six hours straight of Weird Al Yankovic mu music. So I <laughs> circled that, I yeah. highlighted it. I'm like, we got to get Weird Al Yankovic somehow. That's it's awesome. like kind of tonally sounds perfect for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, got him. So there was, you know, things like flip -oramas, things like the comic books that George and Harold create. There were, we looked through all the villains, decided we cannot 
make a Captain Underpants movie without Professor Poopy Pants as our villain for the first one. Um, so, you know, it just became kind of the systematic checklist of things that we felt uh, would inherently uh, capture all the best bits of the books. And then because we had Pilkey's blessings, it empowered us to kind of take risks and add our own. Very cool. So... One of my favorite parts of the film, and I, I come from this as like not yeah. a familiar with the books. Like I had heard about it, but I never read it. So I was curious to see it for the first time. Um, one of my favorite parts, though, is the visual style that you, you do in the movie. I mean, there's mm -hmm. 2D animation, there's 3D animation, there's all sorts of yeah, playful stuff. Going. Celebration of yeah. animation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, is, it was really interesting and diverse. Um, was that something that you had, you had taken inspiration from the original series? Was some of that just stuff that the, the series inspired in you? Like, mm -hmm. how did that all sort of come about? Because it is really wonderful. Well, it started, again, from that that effort to really analyze the books and what makes them tick. And uh, for me, the, one of the most unique qualities of the books is that Dave Pilkey has these really unconventional devices that he uses regularly uh, that I think keep them from being monotonous reads. You know, it's not just a wall of words it's on hard, every page, yeah. right? He's got these these very naively drawn comic books that George and Harold create. He's got Fliparama that breaks up like a, yeah, yeah. what should be a kind of mundane action sequence sure, or yeah. typical action sequence. Uh, so there's there's literally kind of a surprise on every page and some of those translate well to a film and some of them not so, much. Not so well. <laughs> so, uh, so, so the big impetus for using all these mixed media was was really that was to try to find the the visual expression of these unconventional devices that keep the movie being told through George and Harold's point of view uh, and express their wacky sense of uh, oh. imagination. What was it like in terms of casting the film? Mm -hmm. Because to me, and I mean, it seems like it's pretty much an important point in the plot, but the, the friendship between, mm -hmm. uh, was it Greg? George. George. George, George and Harold. George and Harold mm -hmm. is like a key component to the story, ultimately. Greg, and Greg was a whole other guy that... <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, that character poor, poor Greg. got knocked he, off before the yeah, film. Yeah, he, like, he didn't make it into that. It's, that it's, a very, it's a very sweet relationship between the two of them, yeah. so it seems like you had to really kind of find two people who are going to be able to sort of connect on a special level yeah. or whatever you want to say. What was it like in terms of finding, you know, Kevin Hart, Tevin, Thomas Middleditch, or yeah. those other people involved? Uh, well, we had we started with a table read with a lot of these actors uh, very, very early with a, with a super early draft of the script. And they came in, they all sat around the big table, read through it, and you could kind of tell right off the bat that the chemistry between Thomas Middleditch and Kevin Hart was, was there was something magical going on there. And even though they're complete opposite <laughs> types of people, uh, it's true. Um, there was just a, there was a great thing happening. Um, and, and that was super exciting because really, even though the books are called Captain Underpants, they're about George and yeah, Harold and their friendship. Great. Right. Um, and, and it's not just a regular friendship. It's a creative partnership they have which was super exciting to me, you know, especially because a lot of the friendships I've had in my life that I treasure the most have been creative in nature. And you don't get to see that a lot in film or books for that matter. Um, so that was exciting to, you know, really be able to delve deep into something like that, uh, get into the minds of these very creative fourth graders and, and just tell the whole movie through their, their lens yeah. and treat them like the filmmaker, not me. I mean, even beyond them, the cast has a lot of very talented comedians in it. Was that something that just <laughs> right. sort of naturally came about? Or was it something that you're like, we really want to focus on strong comedic talents? Because, I mean, Ed Helms' character is really interesting because, I mean, he's both the evil principal and like this most happy-go-lucky superhero right. at the same time. So was it, was it a calculated <laughs> thing to bring all these comedians in? Or was it just naturally it sort of evolved that that was the cast that sort of work the best together because well the tone of the books is so um irreverent and and fun and silly and um we knew it had to be a comedy and a, and a broad one and i think uh, our fear well it wasn't even a fear i think the the unique thing about these books is because they've been around for 20 years and they have such a loyal following and people now in their 20s, 30s who've grown up on them, we really wanted to be able to speak to that generation. And by casting comedians, and in this case, like 
murder's row of comedy great, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it allowed the movie to kind of work for that demographic, but also, you know, still hopefully bring in all the kids and families as well. Um, whereas if we had just cast kids, I just think that the whole movie would have felt really young and, and the opportunities for comedy that you get out of casting comedians and these guys are all great writers as well. Um, it, it just far outnumbered, uh, far outweighed the, 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 the idea of making it with just kid voices. How did the, as you said, the fact that this has been sort of building for 20 years mm -hmm. impact sort of the, the way you sort of went about structuring this? Because, I mean, there's an entire generation or two of people who are already fans of this coming into this now. And I mean, at the same time, you want to introduce young kids to this for the first time. But you also want to really engage those people who are like hard, hardcore fans of the right. series. How do you sort of balance that like new and old fandom sort of intersecting at this one place? Right. Well, I mean, the, the great thing is you can sort of make the movie both for yourself and for your kids. And like I said, I was, I was a fan to begin with. I also have kids, so I could see how it could work on their level too. Um, the cast was a big part of the appeal, I think, in terms of going after the older crowd. All those guys have fa a huge fan base in, in their 20s and 30s. Um, and... Uh, and the material itself, you know, he's a middle-aged man running around in his underpants pretending to be a superhero. Uh, it's just there's so much physical comedy, the, the potty humor, you can't escape it on this thing. Although yeah. we did set a very high bar for ourselves in terms of when to go there. And it had to be funny. Yeah. Otherwise, we would go for other kinds of, yeah. of jokes. Um, so, you know, it was just... It was it was more of a, uh, a, a joy going after... Uh, people who grew up with the books as well just which just wanted to fold them in and give them kind of ideally uh, a sense of what their childhood felt like very cool so the film is captain underpants the epic first movie i think i got a rest <laughs> epic first movie um, or first tomato but, tomato i i, I want to get it as right as possible <laughs> now you're confusing me i don't even remember now which it's one. just captain underpants, <laughs> captain so underpants like if you follow the captain movie. underpants it'll get you there um <laughs> Thank you so much, David. I wish you the best of luck with this film. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you. Appreciate it. Magneto can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. It's like don't even try to buy the sacrifice. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.